But this is a difference from when I was here a month or so ago. I'm surprised, I guess. I really should pray that the Lord night and day that somebody invented the cassette recorder. We get letters every week, 10, 20, 30 letters of people that have heard our tapes and our ministry has done something for their lives in places we've never been and people will never see. So uh, I was a little shocked tonight when so many people had heard my testimony that had never met me. But then there was a lot of people that called left. Uh, he's been gone a long time. If you will, take these out. You want to take some notes probably on them. There is one on the back of it. I think all the, are the colors the same everywhere with the sheets? I can go over color. On the yellow sheet on the back, front, whatever, you got it too. Um, tomorrow we're going to be, this is the sheet we'll be using tomorrow. We'll be using all the rest of them tonight. And uh, I want to correct something. It's not the pastor's fault. The people who prepared it originally, that's Ephesians 6.12, not 6.14. But we'll be, this is what we'll be teaching on tomorrow night. Hoping that um, we'll have a large bring-in of materials that we'll be talking about tonight to destroy. But I'll start with the yellow sheet. And I want you to write a scripture text across it. Revelation 18.23. At the bottom of the scripture it says, For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by thy sorcerers were all nations deceived. Talking of Babylon. There's no better scripture I know of in the Word of God to describe the Illuminati, which is what we'll be talking about tonight. And we're going to start. I want you to get out. You can lay them across your lap. Find the three pyramids. I think it'll be impossible to lay them side by side because on the purple sheet there's two of them. But we'll do the best we can with what we have. And take out the sphinx. Now, most people do not understand the Illuminati. How many people here have ever done any study on the Illuminati before they heard of me? Okay. How many have done some since they've heard my tapes? A couple, okay. Boy, are the rest of you in for a surprise tonight. I don't want people to listen to me and walk out of here and just accept the things I have. I kind of like it when people go out of here and say, boy, he's nuts. Because they'll go and they'll try and research to prove that I'm wrong. And the more they research, the more they start believing me. It is impossible to research history and to research the conspiracy and to research the Illuminati without coming away a solid believer. As a, the brother who prepared these, Brother Tom Berry said, he went to, through almost 2,000 books for 20 sheets of notebook paper filled with notes. That's how well it was hidden. How many people have a set of encyclopedias at home, a good set? So home tonight, look up the word Illuminati. In some of the encyclopedias, you will find that it existed but does not exist now. And in other encyclopedias, you will find that it existed and still exists now. But they don't tell you anything about it. Before we go into it, I want to give you a reading list. Okay? Now, I want to explain a book before I give its title. And I want you to choose carefully as to whether you want it or not. I don't want you later getting mad at me because I recommended it. It is not a Christian book. It is not a political book. It is an Illuminatus book. The book was ordered, written, and produced by Philip Rothschild, the leader of the Illuminati in this day and age. It was ordered, written by a woman named Anne Rad, and she was at that time one of Philip Rothschild's mistresses. It was written some 12 years ago. She was already a well-known author, and her books sell nationwide. Mostly people who read them are communists. And she wrote this book. It was supposed to be a novel. It's 1,100 pages, so if you don't like to read, don't buy it. And it was written as a novel, supposedly, but it is a code book. And within the book is a step-by-step -step plan to take over the whole world by taking over the United States. Now, I'm going to say many things tonight that a lot of people will try and go out of here and say that I'm anti-American. No, I'm extremely pro-American. I couldn't be that until I became a Christian. But I'm extremely pro-American. I am just anti-government that exists within America today because it is not the government of the people any longer, and I'm pro-people government. That's a term misused by communists a lot. I'm sorry if you're upset that I use, but that's exactly what it says in the Constitution. Oh, this is what I've been waiting on. I'm glad he brings it. I know what's in it. Wouldn't be the first time. Now, the power of the Illuminati, and I'll give an explanation. The Illuminati is as following. Okay, first, most people found the Illuminati 
in things that have crossed their path. People have found it in the occult, and mistakenly they have said, aha, the Illuminati is the occult. Then they have found it in the Masons, and they said, aha, the Illuminati is the Masons. Then they have found it in politics, and they said, oh, it's politics. So they found it in the international banking system, or they found it in Zionism. So they list it as just being that. Actually, it is all these things, and much more. They have found it in the Mormon religion. That's because the leaders of the Mormon religion are high echelons in the Illuminati. They have found it in the John Birch Society. That's because the man who leads the John Birch Society is both a high-degree Mason and a Mormon. But it is all these things, and it's par is finance. If you would take its finance away, which is impossible. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you the name of the book, and I just realized that. I started out. I'm getting ahead of myself. The book is called Atlas Shrug. Oh, Atlas. You know, Atlas supposed to hold up the world. Shrug, like you shrug your shoulders. Atlas Shrug. Now, this is the warning that goes with it. I'll be talking about occult books tonight and how demons are in occult books and in their music and so on. This isn't so with this book. They didn't place a spell on this book because they did not want people to buy this book other than those told to buy it within the occult and within the Illuminati. They are extremely mad because just this year alone they sold several million of them, mostly to Christians, and they don't like that. In fact, they've tried to stop printing it, the people don't want to stop printing it. They're making so much money. The bad thing about it, though, is that since it is written as a novel, it has some passages that uh, I think might belong in Hustler or other places. Maybe out of 1,100 pages you might count five that are this way. You can tear them out and throw them away. They're just stuck in there to hope. They're stuck in there on purpose to keep Christians from reading the book. So if you should get to a passage that uh, is a little something you shouldn't read, just turn to the next page, it'll be over by then, and you can go on with the story. Now, if you don't like to read, skip the first 200 pages. The first 200 pages is exactly the way most people in the world are. They're very boring. No, actually, they're the conspiracy from people in all the walks of life talking about this incident happening and that incident happening. And, and uh, you know, it's very boring to the fact that unless you know that it's the conspiracy that's planning the incident. It's like reading the newspaper today. You don't really know what's happening behind it. But after about the first 200 pages, eight chapters, nine chapters, something like that, it starts showing you that everything that is happening is conspired to happen. And uh, I'm going to give all these things, and I want to say something before I give the rest of the reading list. The common name for the Illuminati is the conspiracy, or the great conspiracy. Now, until we lost the school system to people within the Communist Party and within the organization of the Illuminati and so on, you were taught in your history classes, and some people can remember this if they want to confess up to being that old, that history was taught that it happened because somebody conspired for it to happen. Then we didn't want in this nation anybody to get ideas that maybe our government was a conspiracy. <clears throat> so they uh, decided to start teaching that it just happened because it happened. You know, World War II happened just because some people got mad. World War I happened because some people got mad. The Depression happened because uh, we bought too much too soon without enough money. They did not want anybody to get the idea that it all happened because somebody conspired for it to happen. But I hope to accomplish one thing tonight more than anything, that I will change your attitude, that I'll set new forms or patterns or whatever in your life, that you will walk out of here and when something happens, you'll go, now I wonder what they're really up to. Really? Okay. And we'll be talking about a few things tonight. I want to start with the yellow sheet. Now, there's something missing on the yellow sheet. I want you to draw a block. No, don't draw a block. I'm sorry. Under the First National Bank, write Federal Reserve Act, or the Federal Reserve Commission, FRC, FRA, whichever way you want to write it. You can abbreviate it or whatever you want to do. All right. Now, if you'll look at the pyramids, let's start with the one that says organization. Now, there's no way to preach a sermon when you're given a teaching like this. I'm going to play school teacher tonight. If some of you find it boring, you happened in the wrong meeting because you might as well think that you're back in high school or going to college or whatever because that's about what it's going to be like tonight. I'm going to give a lot of facts. I'm going to try and leave enough time that we can have some questions because there's no way I can say all I'm going to say tonight without leaving some people in confusion. Pastor disappeared. There he is. Did you turn that air conditioner on? It's hot in No, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> Can't put this many people in a building like this without starting something. Okay. Start with the one that says organizations. And if you'll notice on all the pyramids, the first three blocks are exactly the same. 
Now, if you've heard my testimony, you know that I came from the Council of Thirteen. Now, I want to stop, take about three minutes to explain the doctrine of the high part of the occult. The, first, the last four levels of the occult, or the last three levels of the occult, the fourth, fifth, and sixth level, and most of the modern cults today, particularly Mormonism, believe the same thing. How many people ever saw a movie called The Dunwich Whore? Nobody ever saw that movie. A couple people saw it. Okay. And I think uh, Sandra D was the star of it or something. Okay. That was probably one of the strongest movies truthful about witchcraft and their beliefs that ever existed. Now, there was the original occult Bible, witchcraft Bible, was called the Necromonicon. There's only three copies in existence today. One is in the town in, in St. Petersburg Cathedral in the USSR. One is in New York City. No, I'm sorry. One is in Glasgow and one is in London. I saw when it was on, the one from the London Museum was in New York for a while. I got to hold it and look at it and so on when it was in the occult. Now, from that, the Book of Shadows, the occult Bible, came into existence. Several books have been written from the Necromonicon and are in many Christians' hands today, which we're hope that we'll burn before it's over. Now, according to the Necromonicon, the beginning of the world happened at man or mortals. If you watch the witch, you know the difference between witches and mortals. That mortals, or everyday earth men, women, and so on, kind of descended from the apes and so on, and that at the beginning of this world, the son of the creator of all the dimensions and universe came from the dimension that the gods dwell in. They came here by, believe it or not, flying saucers, and that they mated with the people of this world, and their children were the witches. And this is actually found in a book called the Book of Enoch, which contains the Book of Noah, which contains all of this garbage. Now, according to it, the little people were the witches, the fairies, the hobbits, the elves, and so on, and they were the dwellers of this world. And then through intermarriage, they started becoming everyday people. Now, the, the son of Lucifer was called Adam. Now, this is exactly, except they don't call it Lucifer, that is in the Mormon Bible. And that Adam being the father of this world, and Eve, they also called it Shira, Diana, Isis, Aphrodite, uh, many names, Hector, Selene, the, in other words, the mother of creation, was his wife. Now, according to this doctrine, the people that came to this world were the gods that lived on Olympus and other places of high altitude, and that when the Rothschilds, back in the about the 17th century or so, the gods started living in the Rothschilds. They had chose them as the purest family in the occult belief. And through the Rothschilds, making them gods, not mortals, not witches, but gods themselves, they created the Illuminati. Now, I might throw in this, and we'll discuss it later. They believe that Adam is alive again today and is ready to rule the world. With peace, by the way. What else? Now, if you look at the pyramid, the capstone is free from the pyramid because the capstone is the Rothschilds, and they do not consider them human. They consider them God. And the eye is the father god, Lucifer. Now, the Council of Thirteen is right there because they are the Rothschilds' private ministers. The Illuminati functions as all of the pagan governments used to function of Babylon, of Moab, of uh, Egypt, of Greece, of Rome, of Scotland, of Ireland, and so on. All the pagan governments function the same way. The priests and priestesses of the temple told the rulers of the government, like the Pharaohs or the Caesars or whatever, what to do, because they were told by the gods what to do, and the Pharaohs listened to them. Now, in this case, the gods are the Rothschilds. So if while I'm speaking tonight, and if you heard my testimony, you wonder why can one man so young in witchcraft and so on tell governors and senators and sometimes even presidents what to do. It's because they belong to the Illuminati and the Illuminati is a pagan government that listens to them because they don't give the orders. They simply repeat the orders that was given to them by that capstone, capstone called the Rothschild. Now we drew the three pyramids that make up the Illuminati and you can study them later. But there's one that I want to take before we go into the yellow sheet. I think it's on the purple one here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's take organizations real quick. I want to read you something. Now, I know we have some masons here. I'm going to get you again. Now, many of you know that I did a book for Chick Publications called The Broken Cross. We've written another one that will be out in about three months. 
Hmm, you wouldn't believe the threats that have come over this book. It hits the Mormons. It hits the occult. It hits the conspiracy and the Rothschilds. It hits the Masons. Man, I think they're going to have to go into a bomb shelter instead of a bulletproof windows over there. And it's really brought the infiltrators within the Christian church out into the public. And I'm going to read you a passage that came out in the book. I'm going to read you a passage from one of the highest books written in Masons. It is a book that is only supposed to be read by 33rd degree Masons and those of the 30th, 31st, and 32nd whose lives prove that they are not Christians that they can hand this book to. We have a copy of it. We photostaffed the copy, and we have been showing it around the country. We have been getting people out of Masons right and left. Of course, we've been getting a lot of Masons mad at us, too. But I'm not going to do what I usually do and really pick on the Masons tonight. I'm just simply going to read from two books of theirs, and I'm going to let the Masons draw their own conclusion. That which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is a God that one adores without superstition. To you, sovereign, grand, inspectors, general, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degree. The Masonic religion, religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degree, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would Abaddon... Now, before I go on, I'll say Abaddon is found in Revelations for you students of Revelation as the keeper of the pit, the demon over all the rest of the demons. Would Abaddon, the God of the Christians, whose deeds prove his cruelty, profanity, and hatred of men, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would Abaddon and his priests culminate him? Yes, Lucifer is God. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is a heresy. And the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Abaddon, Jesus Christ. But Lucifer, God of light and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Abaddon, the God of darkness and evil. They're calling Jesus Abaddon. They're calling Lucifer everything we believe of of Jesus, and Jesus everything we believe of the devil. And that's in one of their own books. Now, if you'll notice on this three blocks of any of them, you'll notice the Council of 33. The Council of 33 is the following. Within the Masons, there are the 32nd degree, then there is the honorary 33rd, and then there is the 33rd. I'm going to read you from the Lost Keys of Freemasonry, written by Manley P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason, and, ever, and co-authored by another man, a 33rd degree, and illustrated by a 32nd degree Mason. All still, all were in the Masons. This was written in 1942. It's a book for Masons only. I'm going to read you the initiation to become a member of the Council of 33, the third, or actually the second highest council within the Mason, I mean within the Illuminati. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. He must follow in the footsteps of his forefather, Tubal Cain, who with the mighty strength of the war god hammered his sword into a plowshed. Now, when I was saved, I complained. Well, no, what am I saying? What am I saying when I was saved? I didn't find this out until I was saved. When I was in the occult, I complained at our council meetings because the 33rd council had so much power, and I felt it was unjust because I had proven myself so greatly to Lucifer. You know, witches are very proud people. And I complained that they didn't do the same thing. Now, we really didn't know what the Council of 33 did or what their rights were because we were a cult and they were Masons. When I got saved and saw this, I found out they did do the same thing. The warrior on the block right, remember I said they must prove their ability to properly apply this energy? The warrior on the block right is human sacrifice. They did do the same right. The very leaders that lead the Masonic belief Remember, they said, of the high initiates. They laugh at the Blue Lodge and those below them because of what they really know and who they really worship. We had a man saved about two weeks ago, in, or about three weeks ago now, in Jacksonville, Florida. It was a 32nd degree Mason. His father was a 33rd. His future father-in-law was a 33rd. His mother and future mother-in-law and fiancé were all on the Eastern Star, and he was ready to perform the warrior on the block when he was saved. He told us, huh, can I come hide at your retreat? My own parents will set me up to be killed because I have left the Mason. Now, that's a 32nd degree Mason saying that. You think about it. All right? Now, 
Go with me to the back of that purple sheet, the political organization. Okay. The Trilateral Council and the Council of Foreign Affairs. There's two separate blocks there, and it shouldn't really be. You can leave it this way. The Trilateral Council is the brain center of the Council of Foreign Relations. Most people do not know that America, without being an official member, is a member of the European Common Market. The Trilateral Council is the American version of the European Common Market. Every man in the Council of Foreign Relations and every man in the Trilateral Council believes that Lucifer is God supreme, has declared it, has taken a vow of secrecy, and has dedicated his life to seeing that Adam gains the world. Our president is a member of the Trilateral Council, and that is a well-known fact for people who dig into politics. So don't anybody, please, don't anybody tell me how great a Christian he is. Now, let's go over to the all sheet, to the Sphinx, and we'll go on with something else. I'm going to give you the rest of that reading list. I haven't forgotten. Just bear with me. When you study Atlas Shrugged, this book was written, as I said, 12 years ago, you will find out that you are reading the front pages of the paper today. The oil shortage that doesn't exist, they state that they destroy their own oil wells, that they hide their own oil so nobody can have it. They state how they destroy the coal mines and shut the coal mines down to shut the electricity down. They state how they cripple the country and no food is grown. It states how they pick and derail trains and so that no trains go. It states how they sink and pirate thousands of ships every year. We just recently heard a report by the Coast Guard down in Florida, how they're asking people not to sail out on pleasure craft in the Bermuda Triangle area, not because they believe in the Bermuda Triangle, but because over 1,000 ships were pirated last year and everybody on board was killed and dumped in the ocean. Now, they don't like to put that in the front page, as you see. That might call some people to wonder about some things. And this is all in this book that was written 12 years ago. And in the book, they gain control of the world by bankrupting their own businesses. The Illuminati owns most, I would say, 99 and 9 tenths of the stores that you walk into and shop in the gas stations you go to. And they are going to destroy them on purpose. They are in the process of buying up over the last few years all the stores they don't own. They bought up grants and they bankrupted. They just bought up two guys and you can watch for them to go out of business. And they keep in business the ones that they've always owned, and they are going to bankrupt them before long and cripple them and destroy them. And the idea of taking over is to bankrupt the whole world where nothing is of any value and the currency does not exist anywhere, and then come back and solve all the problems. I heard the Gaithers, which are my favorite group recently, on a record in a live concert. The guy was talking about the energy crisis. He says, it's funny, it doesn't matter if it's the Republicans or Democrats, they get elected, they cause us problems, and then solve them so it looks like they're doing something. Now, that's about the way it really is. And the book in Atlas Shrugged ends with the hero, John Galt, which is really Philip Rothschild, lifting his hand up in the air and drawing the symbol of his organization. It never says Illuminati in the book. In the air and says, we shall follow this symbol back. And the symbol that he draws is that. Can everybody see it where you're at? It's a dollar sign. Now, the dollar sign is only used in America, by the way. Nowhere else to represent money. It's almost 8,000 years old or probably older. It goes back and you find it in the pyramids. And it means to scourge or to punish and through punishment to purify and make right. That's what it means. Funny that that's what we symbolize their money. Now, the Rothschilds lead the Illuminati. And in every country, they have a family with the head of that family being the head of the Illuminati. In the United States, we have the Rockefellers. David Rockefeller is the head of both the Council of Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Administration or Council, which is the name of the Illuminati within the United States. And these, there's more blocks in these things and more blocks in the pyramids, but we have placed the main blocks that would interest America. And the main source of finance for the Illuminati and the whole world, but particularly in the United States, is the Standard Oil Company. Now, I'm going to educate you about something tonight that the Illuminati hoped nobody would ever find out about. Of course, you can check out who owns Standard Oil. That's David Rockefeller. He's the owner of Standard Oil. Now, when we were in the Illuminati, we had to learn the hieroglyphics of the Illuminati, and we had to go and shop at the stores that the Illuminati marked themselves, marked their stores by. 
Of course, they own almost everything, but their main business is they mark. And Standard Oil is the conglomerate that owns almost everything. If I told, I'm going to tell you the things they own, you're not going to believe what they own. It's that astonishing. If I ask most people today, besides Standard Oil, in fact, I'm going to, what would you say was the number one conglomerate within the United States? Anybody, tell me. Besides Standard Oil. Sears? That's Standard Oil. General Motors. That's the one I was waiting on. Standard Oil owns General Motors. They own Ford. They own American Motors. They own Chrysler. Now, you'll see Federal Department stores down here. Federal Department stores is Sears, Kenny's. A man very close, very powerful in the Illuminati, doesn't live too far from here, that owns all the Federal Department stores, lives in Columbus. His name is Lazarus. Now, Lazarus owns Federal Department stores. Federal Department stores owns Gold Circle. They own Kresge's, which owns Kmart. They own just about every department store in the United States, Globe, Ontario, so on. They own Woolworths, which owns Wilco's. But Standard owns Mobile, and Mobile owns Montgomery Wars. You getting the message? Now, you can find out what Standard owns because they mark their signs with blue and red, everything they own. They also, in all of their oil companies, mark their oil companies with occult symbols. The main symbol is the sign of their god, the five-pointed star. Now, that w and the strongest version I've ever seen of it is the five-pointed star radiating rainbow colors because they know that Lucifer is the god of the rainbow, as they put it. And if you'll read Ezekiel 28, you'll find out he is. He does kind of radiate like a rainbow. He's covered with different colored jewels and so on. And this thing, they have snuckle with the arrow through it because that's the sign of casting a spell, the arrow. They use 76 because May 1st, 1776 is their birth date of the Illuminati. They use the sign of what witches practice in, this magic circle. When they write mobile, they write everything in blue, but they leave the circle in red. Most people don't even notice that, that there's a difference. The winged horse in Marathon, Pegasus, is the messenger of the god. It goes on and on. Holiday Inn is the star with the rainbows. And you just go on and on. The eightfold path of, of what a witch must master to be a powerful witch is the symbol of Denny. That's owned by them. So I see that they've got Sears separate from Federal Park for stores. They really shouldn't. Shell Oil was the last oil company to go when Queen Julianne, which is a member of the 500 here, and her husband, Prince Bryden, and Philip Rothschild owned 90 percent of Shell Oil. Gaul doesn't bear occult signs because it's owned by British Products, but British Products is owned by the Illuminati. Fazio's is owned by the Mafia that's controlled by the Illuminati. I don't know why Union 76 is separate because it's a member of Standard Oil. But this will give you an idea. And First National Bank is doing a new thing now. They're putting out 13 circles on their buildings with all the emblems of the Illuminati on them. I guess they want lots of power. They've used the 13 plus the I and plus all oh, different things and so on. Chase Manhattan Bank is, and Bank America are both owned by the Rockefellers. First National is owned by the Dows and the DuPonts and the Kennedys. And the Federal Re I am cracking up. I told you right Federal Reserve Act is on there. I'm not even looking tonight. The Federal Reserve Act, most people think, is a mem uh, section of the United States government. It is not. The Federal Reserve Act is a stockholder-owned company. It's illegal. It's against the Constitution of the United States, but nobody dares oppose it. Now, what most people don't realize is the Constitution says Congress will set our weights and measures and the values of our dollar. But the Federal Reserve Act does that. Now, the Federal Reserve Act was pushed through by Woodrow Wilson, the first Illuminati president since Thomas Jefferson. And he was smart. He adjourned everybody to go home for the Christmas holidays and kept 55 congressmen and senators back that belonged to the Illuminati. This was back before they ran Congress. And before that everybody could get back, he adjourned Congress and they passed the Federal Reserve Act. You see, now they, got, they do it in a different way. They own everybody. Now, I want to say a couple more things, and then we're going to go into some things here on those signs, and then we're going to take questions. If you'll take up this blue sheet that says, Illuminati Plan for World Takeover. <coughs> All right. Look for, it says, Democratic President Gets a Laws Enacted. They're talking about J.C. <clears throat> the first law that the Illuminati has but they have not got passed yet, the number one law they want passed is called the, the, the Dow Gun Act. I'm sorry, the Dees Gun Act. It's penned by Isaac Bronowitz, which you'll find on the Council 13 list there, but it's supposed to really be penned by Martin Dees, who led Jimmy Carter's campaign and is head of the National 
Handgun Control Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, most people don't know how important it is that we not lose our constitutional right to own a gun. The Illuminati will never be able to start Helder Skelter, which is on this thing, and you can read about it later, unless they can convince the people that they're not going to have to go from door to door fighting their way down the street as they burn and kill and rape and everything else. So they have promised them there'll be nothing existing in the form of guns in anybody's hands within the next year and a half. Now, I think that that's where the Illuminati is going to have a little problem because they had counted on passing the same law in Massachusetts as the test law, and they lost it. The law would have gave the National Guard the right to come into your home and the state police without a search warrant and search for your guns and confiscate them and arrest you if you had not turned them in with 60 days of the passing of the law. They thought that since Massachusetts was the strongest anti-gun state in the nation and since Ten Ted Kennedy supposedly wrote the bill himself, it would get passed. Boy, were they in for a shock. It lost by a landslide, almost three to one. And that has thrown them in fear that maybe that same law would not be passed in the United States. Now, the other laws removed tax exemption from churches, House Bill 41. I spoke up when I was here before. By the way, did they pass that bill here? That one you were fighting, 1441 or They did pass it? They passed it? It was about tax or something here. They didn't come to vote? Okay. Now, 41, I understand, has been passed by now, at least by my information of what I can get. And it is supposed to pull the tax exemption from churches not belonging to the World Council of Churches or not having memberships of 500. And then, or what well, it doesn't say is a poem. It says that you must go to court and prove that you should stay tax deductible and you'll spend a couple million dollars in court so it's not worth battling. Then, those that keep their status, all except those belonging to the World Council, I mean the National Council of Churches denominations, which leaves out independent Baptists, by the way, uh, all except them, no other exemption. You will have your name, your address, your phone number, just people coming in, let's we'll keep on, uh, printed in every post office in the United States. Plus, you may have an IRS audit without any reason, just because you gave gifts of the thing. This is what the bill's about. The next is the Genocide Act. Now, this law was defeated eight years ago, and it's up for vote again in about, oh, three, four weeks. Now, it will send you to the federal penitentiary if you convert somebody from the faith that they were born into. I don't mean born again into. It's a copy of a law in Egypt that you must leave everybody alone to their own faith. That means if you convert a Mormon, a Catholic, a Southern Baptist, something like this. Nobody laughed on that one. <laughs> if you convert somebody from another faith, even if they're over 21, their parents may press charges against you and have you indicted, not for conversion of somebody, catch this, for genocide. And you'll stand trial, not for some misdemeanor, but for murder. That's right. And that one is being pushed through. Um, the next is the Presidential Martial Law powers. It's called the, Pre it's called the Martial Law Act. It's already been passed, I think it's passed last November, signed, enacted, in a law. Now, I want to say something. If you haven't heard about these, that's because... You typically do something that the Illuminati counts upon. Now, people, I'm going, to sit, I'm going to try and change your life with this. When Congress is arguing over something about a law that they're going to pass or something they're going to do or somebody they want to fire or get rid of, start digging and find out what they're really doing that you're not hearing on the television. The only time Congress or the government argues or does publicity about anything they're doing is when they don't want you to know what else they're doing. It's a smoke screen. When they fired... I can't even think of his name now. That guy that was on President Carter's committee and so on, when they fired him, they passed the Martial Law Act while you weren't looking. They, when, right now, tr they passed House Bill 41 and they're trying to pass the Genocide Act without you knowing it while they argue over the Panama Canal. Now, we're never going to give the Panama Canal up, even if the law is passed, because we're supposed to get up in the year 200, and all the pol people in politics believe that we'll have a world government by the year 1980. So they don't plan on giving up. In fact, they don't even believe the Panama Canal is going to exist anymore. That it's going to be blown off the face of a map in a world war about the year 1980. So they don't care what they do. They're arguing over it. They could pass it right now if they wanted to. They're arguing over it and feuding and fussing and getting as much publicity as possible so you won't know about the other laws that they're trying to pass. So when you hear something big explode, like the upcoming trials on the congressman and so on over the Korean thing, that's probably about the time that they'll probably pass the Anti-Hoarding Act and finish up the Genocide Act. The Anti-Hoarding Act forbids you to own more than one month's food or one month's fuel supplies on the penalty of one year and $5,000 fine 
one year in federal penitentiary. Now, I want you to go home and ask yourself why our government, we're not starving yet, we will be before long, but we're not yet, why they want to pass a law forbidding you to have more than one month's food supply in your home, why you are not allowed to stockpile food. We're not in World War II when you had to do this. We're now. There's a reason for it. Those are the major laws that they're trying to pass. Now, I got all that stuff out of the way. Now, we'll play school. I'm going to need a mic. Can I move one of these mics with me? Do any of them disconnect? Or... Not really. Okay, then I'll stand over here and point. Excuse me for pointing.